So, <clears throat> good morning. Looks like we got some politically scary stuff going on. So apparently, the U.S. just struck down the second-in-command of a uh, Iran general. This is pretty serious when it comes to end times events, war, prophecy. Um, it's pretty serious. Um, there's a lot of people that think that uh, prophecies in Daniel chapter 8 have already occurred with Alexander the Great. There's a lot of people that debate and say that, no, this is uh, for the end times. And uh, But it does even say in Daniel 8, uh, verse 17, that understand that the vision refers to the time of the end. Well, is the time of the end during the Alexander the Great, or is the time of the end during the end times before Messiah returns? So anyway, if... Uh, you are concerned about this as I am. Let uh, let's let's be praying for the Middle East because this is pretty serious. I don't know if this has ever happened before, where the U.S. has literally attacked a, a second in command general from Iran at the Iraq Baghdad airport. This is very strange. So, how are they going to turn this around? How is uh, and and I guess Trump is is. I don't want to say bragging about it, but claimed responsibility. And so this is, uh, this is pretty serious. What it says in one of the articles here is that uh, General Salamani spearheaded Iranian militia operations in the Middle East as head of the country's elite Kud force. Kud's force. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. But it says two missiles fired from a MQ-9 Reaper drone struck shortly after he disembarked from an aircraft at Baghdad Airport. I'm not even going to try to pronounce these names, but Deputy Head of Iraq's Association of Militia Forces, the popular mobilization units, was also killed in the attack. The Pentagon just assassinated or justified the assassination, saying General Soleimani was actively developing plans to attack American diplomats and service members in Iraq throughout the region. Now, mind you, this comes just after the attacks at the uh, American embassy protests, supposed protests, as, as they call it, um, where, the, you know, we're ramping up troops because of the uh, the threats that we're getting against American troops in the American embassy. So uh, taking a defensive position I don't think is bad, but... Uh, Wow, this is a, a next step, a drone strike attack. This is just days after the protesters attacked the embassy in Baghdad. So Baghdad is where this is all happening, Baghdad, Iraq. And, uh, man, yeah, so you want to be praying for our country because our soldiers are going to be involved. Our, our president needs wisdom, and uh, this is uh, – we need God's help. We need God's uh, direction. And his protection, and uh, I don't know what in the world we're doing over there. Uh, God knows, and uh, surely there's going to be something uh, he has planned out of this, but uh, 2020 begins with a bang. Yep, that's one of the headlines. So, anyway, um, Glad to see somebody's uh, watching. How you doing out there? Feel free to say something or comment or subscribe. Appreciate you watching. Um, just talking about the news a little bit this morning. Iran and prophecy. Um, Daniel eight and eight talks a little bit about these uh, the Perbs and the Medes in prophecy, and uh, this idea of the ram and the goat having two horns, one bigger than the other, uh, one being the media and one being Persia. That being today's modern day Iran. Um, so you might want to check that out in Daniel chapter eight, uh, read it for yourself and see what it says. Understand it. In 2019, some local news here, 
In 2019, Kansas City, according to the Kansas City Star, Kansas City nearly hits its all-time record for homicides, most of which are unresolved. That's that's pretty sad, and um, maybe saying something about the culture here in Kansas City that we need to uh, be praying for that. 151 deaths, killings in 2019. Kansas City nears its record of 155 homicides just set two years earlier. So we're not on a decline, we're on an incline that uh, we need to do something about. Um, so what can we do to uh, to address these homicides? You know, we need to address the gun, not necessarily, I want to say gun culture, but this uh, culture of young people, instead of fist fighting, they're not fist fighting anymore. They're taking up guns because they're afraid to fight and they want to show power. They don't have fathers in the homes anymore. 90% of our kids that are at risk of juvenile uh, delinquency don't have fathers in the home for one reason or another. And uh, we need men of God to stand up and, and to, to have an influence in their culture. And when we subjugate that to someone else's responsibility, um, this is the kind of thing that happens. Um, we see children running rampant. You've seen Lord of the Flies. If you haven't, check it out. Lord of the Flies is basically a shipwrecked island of, ruled by kids. And it gets pretty ugly really fast. Kids ruling themselves turns violent. And that's what we see in the cities. Kids taking guns, taking violence into their own hands. Well, we know that if men stand up and are present in their children's lives, they, they can calm down, their anxiety goes away, they can relax because they know they have that security protection. We don't need, you know, government reaching in and providing that comfort and security. No, we need fathers in the homes to stand up. We need to, to find out ways to, to resolve uh, divorce situations. I know there's some situations you can't help. You can't always resolve uh, all those situations where, where people have to separate and go their other ways. Sometimes people just bring out the worst in each other. I, I don't always understand that. And I don't think we ever will fully understand that. But we need fathers involved with their kids' lives. And uh, that's definitely statistically proven. All right, well, what else do we got? <clears throat> I'll see if I can't find one more story. You know, um, probably should have had these queued up already before I just dove in here, but uh, oh my gosh. Put on some more music while I'm looking. Oh, so yeah, in Colorado, there's these uh, mysterious drones doing the formations, uh, been being seen, you know, uh, they come in the night. Let's see, this article from msn.com says that it's creepy. Unexplained drones are swarming by night over Colorado. An article by Mitch Smith one day ago. It says they come in the night, drones, lots of them, flying in precise formations over the Colorado and Nebraska prairie. It's interesting because drones aren't cheap. You know, this is, has to be a big operation if they're having a huge formation swarm and uh, they don't know who's doing it. You know, I'm sure we'll figure it out eventually, but um, people say it's creepy and uh, outside their farms. I mean, these are farm people seeing this and, and, and it's strange. What kind of thing are they gearing up for training for? Uh, but they have lots of questions and why are they doing it? Nobody seems to have an answer. Um, Sheriff's Department said that they've been seeing them since before Christmas in the region, and they've been bombarded with uh, reports of large drones with blinking lights, wingspans up to six feet, flying over rural towns and open fields. The drones have unnerved residents, prompted the federal investigation, and made international news, even though they may be perfectly legal, and still they remain unexplained. Hmm. In terms of aircraft flying at night and not being identified, this is a first for me personally, Sheriff, said Sheriff James Brugman of Perkins County, Nebraska, who's worked in law enforcement for about 28 years. 
and who saw the drones himself while on patrol Tuesday night. Lots of rumblings about people wanting to shoot down the drones. Well, <laughs> yeah, I, I could imagine if you feel like you're being spied on by a drone, whew, that, that uh, could be an invasion of privacy, couldn't it? People don't like it. Um, the flights have drawn attention just as the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, proposed sweeping new regulations that would require most drones to be identifiable. Uh, maybe they put uh, labels on them like they do aircraft, you know. Uh, so, anyway, some interesting things going on. What is this gearing up for? You know, so. All right. Well, I should probably shut this down. Uh, appreciate whoever's out there watching. It's been an interesting uh, live stream. Um, we'll see if I can't do more of this and. Uh, see if more people are interested in what I'm sharing out there. So biblical prophecy news, that's a that's kind of what I'm going to be doing more reports of and just you know, I'll uh, I'll post as I hear more things. All right. Be praying for uh, this nation, pray for the Middle East, pray for um, uh, these murders in Kansas City that uh, have uh, increased over the last few years and seem to be on the rise. So Let's just pray right now. And Father God, I just ask for your intervention. I pray that uh, you would uh, have control. Uh, you do have control. You are sovereign. You you are um, absolutely um, in control of what's going on. You can steer the hearts of kings, as your word says, like the, the course of a river. And Lord, we just ask that you would uh, help us to see with insight, be aware of uh, the times that we're living in. And uh, Lord, help us to... Uh, find ways to curb the uh, the violence here in our own local cities. So I pray this in the only name that has power to save, Jesus. Amen. All right, well, God bless and keep praying.